All right, so I get it. I'm getting just as sick as you are of uh, me continually coming out with videos about General Assembly and my poor experience with a coding bootcamp. But I thought this video would be helpful for a lot of you looking to get into tech, especially coming up in 2024. There's a lot of factors to consider when choosing a coding bootcamp. And if you end up landing on one and get in, here's five red flags that I would look for early on in the experience to know if you've landed in a bad experience or a suboptimal experience. Ultimately, if I had noticed these red flags when I was going through General Assembly, I would have opted out a lot quicker than I did. So I hope this helps some of you. Thing number one is if the instructors are not meeting the same demands the students are meant to meet. This is the earliest red flag that I can think of seeing in my coding bootcamp, aside from perhaps how easy it was to get into the bootcamp in the first place. On the first day of coding bootcamp, there was no sign that this would be the case. However, as early as day number two, I noticed that my TA didn't have his camera on. No big deal, it would be fine. Uh, you know, things happen. You can't always have your camera on. This would have been fine, except for the fact that General Assembly requires all of their students to have their cameras on during class time. So why wouldn't the teachers be expected to do the same? In any case, at that time, I let it go and I let it go for quite a while. I figured he must have been having a bad day or had something he had to attend to at home. Fine, it happens. But that one day turned into two days turned into five days, and after finally multiple weeks of him not having his camera on, and paired with his lack of participation overall, this became really frustrating and became just another way of him showing his lack of participation in the class. This behavior ended up cascading up and down the chain, not only the quality of instruction, but in how management showed their lack of concern with these issues when we brought them up to them. Ultimately, from this experience, I learned that oftentimes behind a bad employee stands a bad manager, but more on that later. Thing number two is if the majority of the students are behind in class or coding for the very first time. This is a bit of a tough one because coding boot camps are aimed at people looking to make that career switch. In their pitch and in all of their marketing materials, they're advertising, you know, go from zero to an employed software engineer in three months, six months, whatever it may be. Oftentimes people who are signing up for coding boot camps are in essentially my exact situation. They're going to a coding boot camp while working close to full time and raising a family. These people, me being one of them, need to be helped if they start falling behind a little bit and have a little bit of assistance. It's not up to the bootcamp to make sure 100% that you're keeping up all the time. They have their pace that they have to abide by as well, but there should be some help on that end. A small amount of assistance is totally acceptable and necessary for people to succeed, but there is this lie that I think a lot of people tell themselves, either on purpose or out of ignorance, about how hard learning to code really is. That lie specifically is that the coding bootcamp will take care of all of the deficiencies and teach you everything you need to know about how to get into the field. And if you find yourself in this mindset, that's normal, but I would say it's time to reconsider. Learning how to code is very hard. If you're thinking about signing up for a coding bootcamp without having first spent a considerable amount of time self-teaching, I would take some more time before signing up. More specifically, I would spend no less than 100 hours learning HTML, CSS, and getting the grips of a little bit of JavaScript. By learning HTML and CSS, you'll get an idea of what making a UI is, and you'll learn some decent basics. Once you get into JavaScript, it'll really start to become challenging, and that's when the work starts. That's when you find out if learning to code is for you or if it's something that you'd rather not do. You should at least get to that first big stumbling block. You should hit that first wall and make sure that you can either get over it or that the frustration of hitting that wall doesn't make you lose interest in learning to code in the first place. If you find yourself getting stuck, then unstuck, then stuck again, then unstuck, then stuck again, and you don't hate it, joining a coding bootcamp might be a good route for you. Now back to the main point. If you're not behind in class, but you are noticing a lot of your classmates are falling behind, pay attention to what kind of help that they're getting. Are they getting pulled into breakout rooms? Is the instructor explaining things thoroughly or maybe a second time if people aren't understanding? And one question worth asking yourself if you're doing well and other students are struggling is this, have I learned this material already or am I actively learning from my teacher? For me, when I attended General Assembly, I'd already self-studied for about 200 hours. I'd gotten a decent grasp of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So during the first module, students were starting to fall behind, but I wasn't yet overly concerned about it because 
I had already taken the time to study and understand these concepts. I wasn't falling behind. It, there was not a huge obvious loss of value for me in that first bit of the coding bootcamp because I understood the material for the most part. Whereas when we got to the backend module and started learning uh, Node.js and Express and MongoDB, I started feeling the effect of the lack of quality in my cohort because I didn't understand those things quite as well. So make sure if you are understanding the material that it's a byproduct of the teacher being good, not only a byproduct of you taking the time to self-study before the cohort even started. This can obviously be hard to judge if you understand the material and the instructor isn't teaching super effectively. It may not be obvious, but do your best to make an honest assessment of the quality of instruction going on in the cohort. Thing number three is there are a lot of early dropouts. Most coding boot camps claim around a 20% dropout rate, which I think is fair. Every time I say that, people go, whoa, that's so high, but Learning to code is really hard. I, I don't, uh, that doesn't seem like a ridiculous number of people to drop out for me. And if the refund policies are sound within the coding bootcamp, I don't see why it's a huge issue that people are signing up and dropping out roughly at a rate of 30%. So 20%, that's a reasonable number for a class of 30 people Throughout the course of the coding bootcamp, you should expect about six of the students to drop out. This was not the case with my coding bootcamp. First off, we had an unusually sized cohort and started off with only 12 people. Within two weeks, two people had dropped. Within a week of that, a third person had dropped and person number four dropped on the presentation day right before they were supposed to give their presentation for the front end module project. While this isn't a huge difference, it's still 30% of the total cohort that dropped, which is a 150% of what they typically expect for a normal dropout rate. Whether this was an indication of instructional quality, lack of screening for students, you can't tell just from this metric, but what it does indicate is that something is wrong in general with the cohort. Eventually, before they closed the cohort, all but two of the students had dropped from our cohort, which was a staggering 83.33333333%. Did I mention that all of them signed an NDA saying they wouldn't talk about their experience at GA except for me? So I'm the only one out of those 12 people that are able to talk about this experience. Thing number four is lack of feedback or reiteration during the lectures. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier. If people are asking questions and the responses from the teachers is minimal, consider that a red flag right off the bat. If students have questions that are related to the course but would stop the course's progress, that's what TAs are for. They should be pulled into a breakout room at that time to get their questions answered and get them caught up or be given an indication of when those questions can be answered. And if a student is chronically behind, they should be moved to another cohort or excused from the bootcamp altogether. Not have their lack of performance swept under the rug like was the case in my cohort. Thing number five is unresponsive upper management. Finally, we get to the point where you know that this cohort is a problem cohort and you need to do something about it. If you go to your student success person with concerns about the cohort, it should be dealt with promptly and with the severity that the situation requires. If you're falling behind, they should have suggestions for you to get caught up and back on track. If a TA is not present for hours and hours of class time per week and is not even turning on their camera or participating in any way, this should be treated as a semi-emergency situation since students aren't getting what they paid for. In our experience at our bootcamp, upper management had to get involved in the situation. And I can actually say less about General Assembly's upper management response to our situation than our student success person's response to it. Our second call with our so-called instructional manager resulted in her not even showing up to the meeting, leaving my classmates and I feeling completely unconsidered. So there's just a few things that I would consider red flags. To conclude, none of these should be taken as an absolute sign that your coding bootcamp is going down the drain, but they were all signs that I initially ignored only to find out that they were the exact reasons I ended my relationship with General Assembly. I hope this helps. Good luck.